by the artist Trevor Henderson, and he is just known for creating all of these very mysterious, strange, and scary cryptids all over the internet. So all the creatures I'm going to be mentioning in today's video are created by him, so I will link all of his social media and info down below in the description. Now Siren Head is known to have two different names. Some people call him Siren Head, and some people call him Lamp Head. He is a tall, thin, humanoid creature with mummified skin and sirens on his head. And the sirens make many different sounds. Sometimes it yells out different words, sometimes it's just white noise, sometimes it spouts out random radio conversations, but any noise it makes, it's extremely loud and actually damages people's hearing. Now in my research, a lot of the sounds that I've heard it make is the sound of like a tornado siren. And if you've ever heard that sound, it is so scary and daunting. Let me just play you an example of a tornado siren. Now imagine that noise coming out of Siren Head. Oh no, thank you. His head seems to be the only robotic part of him, and the rest of his body is organic veins and old skin, and there's even some wires wrapped up in there. And that's why people say he's like half creature and half Siren. Now Siren Head is also thought to have a tape recorder embedded somewhere in his body, and he has this so he can capture the sounds that his victims make. So as they're screaming and running away from from him, he actually records that and then replays it to people as bait. He can also mimic the voices of your family members, of your friends to lure you in. So you can be standing outside and you can hear your mom calling your name and as you go closer you realize it's actually Siren Head and not your mom. Now Siren Head's appearance actually changes depending on who is looking at him. Despite its lack of eyes, it can still see and it also has the ability to manipulate technology by playing sounds through other devices. And it spends most of its time standing still, but it has the ability to move very fast. And it's completely silent when it moves, like you will not hear a peep coming from it. He appears differently to everybody, so sometimes he can look like a lamppost, sometimes he can look like a tree, sometimes he can look like a literal PA system. Now here's the very disturbing thing. Victims of Siren Head have apparently been found with their eyes and eardrums bleeding. And like I said, that's because the noises that come from his sirens are so loud that it will literally make any part of you like explode. Weapons do not normally work on this beast and it has almost never been spotted in large populated areas. Its motives are currently unknown and they might be completely alien to us. So you're not gonna find Siren Head in like a busy town like for me in Toronto you would never find Siren Head. But if you're out in the forest, if you're out in a small town, if you're out in a field, he might be there. People say to be warned if you ever see an out of place street light or street lamp that it might actually be him. For example, if you're hiking and you see a street lamp in the middle of like a forest, that's probably Siren Head. If you're out camping by a lake and you see a street lamp there, it's not supposed to be there. It's probably Siren Head. So just be aware of your surroundings because Siren Head does disguise himself and can literally be anywhere. Alright, so the next creature by Trevor Henderson that I wanted to talk talk about is called Longhorse. Now Longhorse is actually said to be a hero and not a villain. Longhorse appears to be a creature that has a horse skull without a jaw for a head. Its pale neck appears to be infinitely long with some pieces of a black mane hanging all over the neck. Now what's creepy is that every time it moves its neck it makes a cracking noise and his neck bends like a finger allowing it to create as many joints as it wants. So so its neck doesn't move like a normal animal's neck, it literally like bends in like weird ways and cracks. And a really weird fact about Longhorse is that people say he smells like cinnamon, which is very interesting to me. An ancient cave painting has also been found of the Longhorse around three humans. It is revealed that Longhorse has been around since ancient times. And if you look at this old cave drawing, it depicts that this Longhorse is almost like the human's protector. He's supposed to be 
completely harmless and actually warns humans of impending danger. If a human hears a neck crack or sees the long neck of this creature, the message is that a disaster will occur. So he literally comes to you to warn you if something bad is gonna happen. Kind of like how people say that seeing a crow on your property means something bad is gonna happen. It's the same thing with the long horse. Even though he's not an evil creature, you're not in luck if you see him. Another kind of cute fact about him, I know it's not like cute, but to me it's kind of cute because he goes up to people and actually offers them gifts like apples. And that's how he sort of shows his affection towards you. But what's strange is that if you yourself offer long horse an apple, as you give it to him, the apple will turn black and will like fall apart in your hands. And that means that he's accepted the gift. Long horse can enter people's dreams. And if you stare at his neck for far too long without looking away, it would eventually crumble into dust. So if you literally stare at long horse for too long, he will literally just disintegrate. But apparently that doesn't kill him. He'll literally just just come back just fine, but it's strange how that happens. And apparently Siren Head and Long Horse are aware of each other's existence, probably because they are complete opposites. One is a villain, one is a hero, and they probably don't like each other at all. All right, and the last creature I wanna talk about is called the Man in the Red Room. People also call him the Man in the Red Space. You might hear either one. And the story starts out with this man who keeps having this reoccurring dream of a red room. He says it's a room that's tucked away in an unknown city in the back of a building. Inside the room is some sort of strange creature that is hanging upside down. And the man who's having this dream instantly knows that the creature is evil. Something is wrong with it. And this creature should never be let out of this red room. And then basically the man wakes up and his dream never continues past that. The creature in this red room has many holes in its body and its head is oriented right side up. And it appears that the creature's hands and feet are in the ceiling because they are not visible in the image, implying that he can pass through the walls. So this creature is just incredibly strange and it's so eerie that he keeps appearing in this man's dreams. Now this creature did not only appear in a dream, there was this second encounter where this creature appeared to an entire bus. An unknown number of people had to sit inside a bus and listen to the man crawling along the outside of the bus. It was waiting for the humans to exit the vehicle so that it could possibly do something horrible to them. And there's a picture that shows the man looking through the bus window at all of these people. And no one really knows what this creature's intentions are. It's sort of a mystery at this point, but if you ever have a dream of him, watch out. To briefly describe Cartoon Cat, he is a giant feline creature who resembles a 1930s era cartoon cat, hence his name. So he looks like a character that literally walked out of a TV from like the early 1900s. The first time anyone saw a photo of this cartoon cat was August of 2018. A photograph was released showing a giant black cat with an extremely creepy smile and hands covered in white white gloves. And this was the first ever confirmed sighting of Cartoon Cat. Now five days later on August 15th, another photo came out where its head appears to be on the ground with a longer neck. Imagine seeing this in front of your car on the way home. That would be terrifying. So this obviously shows that this creature is able to stretch in strange ways. It's like, this is incredible. Then on August 22nd, the giant Cartoon Cat appeared appears to be standing outside of another abandoned building with its mouth wide open. Then a month went by and no one had seen any more pictures of Cartoon Cat until September 22nd. A photo came out where the monster is staring directly at the camera with its teeth out, possibly with the intent to eat its victim. And this is definitely the most unnerving picture of Cartoon Cat that had come out thus far. The other ones were definitely creepy, but this one is the most threatening. So let's get into the backstory of Cartoon Cat. People are speculating that Cartoon Cat originated from a show in 1939. The creature has the ability to stretch and distort its body, which is very similar to the style of cartoons that aired during the Great Depression. Back in that time, they had a cartoon style called rubber hosing, and it was basically a way that animators didn't have to worry about the character's anatomy. Basically, they would give 
give all the characters very simple and flowy movements. It almost looks as though they don't have bones, kind of like their arms and legs are noodles. Now, most of the old Mickey Mouse cartoons were like this, cartoons like Betty Boop were like this, a lot of old famous cartoons used this rubber hosing style. And this is the exact way that Cartoon Cat moves. So it's like he literally stepped right out of an old show from 1939. So he escaped the television and came to terrorize people in real life. They say that Cartoon Cat likes to come out during the night. And he is one of the most monstrous old cartoon characters to ever be created. So does that mean there's other old cartoon characters wandering around too? Cartoon Cat is often found in a number of abandoned structures. So I guess that's where he likes to hang out near abandoned buildings. And people speculate that he's linked to a ton of unsolved disappearances. So when people go missing near old abandoned buildings, they think it's probably Cartoon Cat because he loves to attack and kidnap people after dark. But what I've read is that he only kidnaps and attacks people if they're near his lair. So as long as you stay away from old abandoned buildings, you probably won't run into him. And I mean, let's be real, you really shouldn't be going near those places after dark anyways. Like, are you crazy? So that's pretty much everything that I was able to research about Cartoon Cat. If you guys have any more crazy facts about him, definitely comment them down below. But what I find interesting is that the reason he's a cat character is because if you look at the old vintage cartoons, most of the characters were either cats, dogs, or mice. That was like the three most popular animals that were in old cartoons. All right, so the next creepy character that was created by Trevor Henderson is called the Dental training dummy. Now dental dummies are usually some sort of mannequin with teeth that is used to train dentists because obviously before a dentist can work on a real person they have to work on a fake person. One of my best friends was training to be a dentist and she was definitely trained this way and she did say that these mannequin dummies can be a little bit creepy. Now the mannequin that Trevor Henderson created has what seems to be one eyeball and a full set of teeth and since the dummy is used only for dental training, there's no arms on the creature, and the dummy seems to be standing on a stand. Now, apparently this dummy comes alive during the nighttime hours, and there was a quote that came out when this picture was released from a worker in the building that complains about how someone keeps leaving the dental training dummy propped against the front doors overnight. So the staff can't figure out why this dummy seems to move around, and the next day at work, it's in a different place than they left. It. And listen, I already have so many fears about going to the dentist. Imagine seeing this in the room with you. I wouldn't be able to do it. And the last Trevor Henderson character I want to talk about is named Bonesworth. Bonesworth is a skeletal being that is missing its lower half of its skeleton. There seems to be a skull shell that opens up to show his actual skull. The creature has oddly elongated arms that he seems to walk with. It could be a ghost, it could be a failed experiment, or possibly both. And apparently if you ever get a random text on your phone from a private or unlisted number, that means he's coming for you. So he'll appear to you after you get this random text and he never leaves you. Now Trevor Henderson has described him as being positive and inquisitive. So he doesn't really sound like a bad character. I don't think he's necessarily evil, but what's interesting is that you'll hear faint xylophone noises getting closer and louder the closer he gets to you. Which I find both hilarious and terrifying at the same time. It reminds me of the spooky scary skeleton song because imagining a skeleton coming towards me while there's a xylophone playing is just so like early 1900s television. But yeah, I find him adorable and spooky at the same time. Actually, there is one more creation by Trevor Henderson that I do want to mention and this is actually one of my favorites ever. There's not a ton of information on it but I love the way it looks. This one is called 98.8 13. But people also call it the red ghost. It is a tall red figure with a red sheet and face, which is usually emotionless. It can lean a lot where it would usually fall over. And like I said, there's not a lot of information about this creature. Some people say it's 14 feet tall, which is insane. But I just love how the red stands out in the dark. It's so cool to me. 
So let's start off with who he really is. He actually has three names that he goes by. The man with the upside down face, the upside down man, and just simply the man. He is known to be one of the most evil and ruthless urban legends that have ever existed. So in short, he's the worst thing you could ever come across. He loves causing pain and he actually feeds off of our emotions. And one of the reasons why he's so feared and so dangerous is because he's able to sneak around unseen. The man with the upside down face appears to be a man with a very large grin that has his head upside down. His mouth appears to be arranged on top while his head is being covered by his hair. Now I was actually able to find a picture of his anatomy. It shows his spine attached to his forehead which is so weird to see and there's an arrow pointing to his brain where it says evil plans. I don't know why I keep doing this with my fingers. Now the upside down man is known to be drawn to tragic events and that is because he loves feeding off pain and people's emotions so throughout history he's actually been caught in photographs and that's what we're gonna be looking at a lot of these photographs are of things like car accidents train accidents tragic events like it'll show a picture of people crowding around an accident and he's in the background looking at the camera so I'm gonna show you guys these pictures and don't worry it doesn't show anything gross it doesn't show any injuries there's nothing like bad to look at. So he's been appearing in photos from the 1910s to the 1960s. And when you first look at the photos, everything looks normal. But when you look really, really close, you can see his face in the background. The first photo is from 1948, where people are surrounded by a car which had an accident. And the man can be seen in the very middle, smiling at the event. It's interesting to note how close he's standing to the other people in the photo, but they don't actually see him. So while the event is happening, he's unseen until the photo is taken and then he's seen afterwards. And it almost makes it creepier to look at these photos because you know these people have no idea that he's there. The second photo appears to be a similar case, except the man is inside of the car smiling directly at the photographer. Now, even though he's drawn to tragic events, he's not known to actually cause them. However, it is said that he can influence the tragic event. So for example, he could appear in their back seat and cause one of their tires to flatten, which in turn may result in an accident. So that's probably why he's literally sitting in the car for this photo. The next photo is another car accident. And as you guys can tell, this seems to be his favorite type of incident to be around. And like I said, it's so creepy that in a lot of these photos, you have to look so closely to find him. This next photo appears to be a normal photo of a marketplace, except the man appears in the back, just grinning. Now people have looked into the background of this photograph and discovered that it's in Budapest, Hungary. So people are wondering if maybe that's where he's from and that's where most of these pictures were taken. Maybe that's where he resides and if that's the case, I'm happy because I'm from Canada and he's far away from me. But imagine if he could like spawn anywhere in the world where there's incidents happening. That means it wouldn't matter where he's actually from because he could still get to you. The next photo is of a New Year's Eve party in 1943. And you might be thinking, Jess, what why is he at a party? He's supposed to be at tragic events. Well, this is at an Air Force base and the night this photo was taken, a man passed away there. It doesn't say what the cause of death was, but that is probably why the upside down man is there. He loves his misery. The next photo is of a train accident in 1951, and I actually kind of struggled to see him in this photograph at first because he's so far back in the photo. I think this is the smallest his face has ever been in a photograph. Imagine just looking at this photo for the first time, not knowing about the upside down man and not knowing he would be in there. You would literally not see him if you didn't know about him. So because this man always appears during tragedies, people thought that maybe he was some sort of grim reaper. As you guys know, the grim reaper is usually a skeletal figure who is often shrouded in a dark hooded robe that comes to collect the souls of humans that have passed. But upon Upon further investigation, people thought, wait, no, 
he couldn't be the Grim Reaper because the Grim Reaper collects souls, but the Upside Down Man eats souls. And honestly, I don't even know what's worse at this point. So it's so strange because this creature has only ever appeared in old black and white photos. To this date, no one has ever seen him in colored modern photographs. Another fact about him is some people say that he actually whistles constantly, but his whistle is so low pitched that you can barely hear it. They say his whistle almost sounds like fuzzy static, like a far off TV. Another fact is that he doesn't actually breathe, which is so strange. And whenever he's around fresh meat, it goes bad. Isn't that a strange fact? Other people have also said that if you go and look through your old photographs from like your childhood, you may catch him standing in the background of one of your photos if it was during something tragic that happened to you. Now I know a lot of people wouldn't take pictures when something sad is happening, but I don't know. You may have. Maybe ask your parents if they have any. This actually reminds me of a time back, probably three years ago, when my best friend Matt and I went to a graveyard to explore. And when we looked at the footage afterwards, we saw this creepy man in a gray suit watching us the entire time. It looked like he was wearing a mask, but I'm wondering if maybe this could be some sort of upside down man appearance. I know his face doesn't look quite upside down, but you can't even really tell because it's so blurry. And also, we were at a graveyard, so obviously it's somewhere tragic, somewhere sad, and that's where the Upside Down Man likes to be. But like I said, this is just an urban legend. It was created by Trevor Henderson. He is so creative. I love his work. I will link all of his information down below in the description, his social media, his website, the other things he's created, because yes, he also created Siren Head, which seems to be going viral around the internet right now. But I just appreciate anything creepy. <laughs> So the window man is a zombie-like creature peering inside of someone's house. Now the photo was taken on a disposable camera in 1998, and I don't even wanna know what happened after this photo was taken. Imagine walking through your house when the sun's going down and just seeing this peering inside. No thank you. Then there's the window thing, which seems to be another creature that is barely visible. It just looks like a silhouette of a tall, thin man with six fingers. Now, some people speculate that he's actually standing facing away from the window. So like with his back against the glass. And this creature has a hobby of traumatizing its victims and driving them insane before killing them. Apparently this photo was taken on day 34 of this creature coming to this person's house. And whoever took this photo has become incredibly paranoid of it. If this creature arrives at your house, you'll hear knocks on the windows and doors. And if you go to investigate, you'll just see a pile of worms outside. Apparently, the only way to prevent this creature from attacking and eating you is to leave a cup of sugar on your doorstep. People who have done this to protect themselves say that they'll go and check on this cup of sugar about three hours later, and the word thanks will be written out in worms. So this creature has like control over these little white worms, which is so weird. Next, we have something called the canal monster. The canal monster appears to be a rotting head in a canal, its mouth stretches to most of its head, and both of its eyes are going in different directions, its nose is barely there, and it's not just a head, if you look really closely you can actually see one of its shoulders. Its teeth has almost completely rotted out, and it just has like a few strands of black hair. Super creepy to look at. And I don't know about you guys, but this really reminds me of Pennywise. Maybe like a mixture of like Pennywise and Gollum, if that makes sense. The creature eats animals such as raccoons, possums, crows, and rats. And one night, a runner was going over the bridge, and as soon as the next song on his iPod was about to start, he heard this low, watery chuckle from the canal below him. And so he got so scared that he changed his route. He did not want to go over that bridge. Now, Trevor Henderson actually added a comment onto this photo, and he said, he still sees you. So the context of this is sort of unknown, but it implies that he can still see you even when you're hiding from him. All right, the next creature we have is called the dinner table. Dinner table is a humanoid creature that is almost the size of a table. It has four skeletal legs with the back legs being slightly bigger and longer than the front ones. It has this human-like face with a small amount of hair. And it's strange because it has a nose, but it has no 
little nose holes for breathing. So it's just there for like decoration. <laughs> it has these two dark empty eyes, a big smile. You do not want to see this in your house. And apparently its skin is so rough and hard that you could not pierce it with anything. So it's sort of hard to defend yourself from this creature. So not only can it disguise itself as a table, but it can break into houses by crashing through the window and it'll hide underneath the dinner table. And then it makes these weird sounds to like lure people into their dining room. And after the victim follows these sounds, the dinner table will appear and attack the victim. Apparently this creature spits out hot acid that melts your skin. And when it's done, it drags its victim outside and buries it. I never thought I would see a creature that is literally a dinner table. Next we have something called the doorman. Doorman depicts a large meaty head with a big smile on his face. His body can't be seen very well in the photo, but people have reported him wearing a black trench coat with a tool belt. Now this doorman apparently carries thieves tools on him so he can break into people's houses. Apparently he also carries a knife. But the strangest thing about the doorman is that he has never been reported to harm a human ever. He has, however, destroyed many homes when he breaks into them. And apparently he goes into your house and takes everything inside of it. Like he takes all of your furniture, all of your possessions. Like he will drain your house of everything. Also, he always leaves behind one mysterious door in the house that wasn't previously there. And these doors lead to dark rooms that may contain other monsters. So while he may not harm you, he'll leave a door behind that when you go through, those monsters will harm you. And apparently this doorman uses all the items he collects in your house to furnish his evil lair. So that's great for him, I guess. And lastly, we have the laughing lady. It is said that someone was driving in their car when suddenly this creature appeared on the side of the road and started pointing at the driver. She is this creature with pale skin, two eyes pointing in different directions, a large mouth. She has these long, thin arms and legs. She's apparently 4.5 meters tall, so that's, that's pretty tall. And they like to call her the god of roadkill. If she laughs and points her finger at a car, it is said that there will soon be a major accident on the road. It is said that previously, the laughing lady was an ordinary woman who was in an accident and she burned but did not die from it. So now she spends the rest of her days on the side of the road cursing other cars, which sounds wonderful. All right, so let's start off with the Smile Room. I feel like the name automatically had me hooked. I was like, what the heck is the Smile Room? Well, this urban legend is also known as the Teeth. It's basically a door that leads to a human-like mouth that has sharp, crooked teeth. So the mouth is disguised in a fake room. So we're gonna talk about a story of someone who actually found the Smile Room back in 2006. On July 27th, 2006, three teenage friends found an amusement complex called Neb's Fun World in Oshawa, Ontario. Now, this is an actual place. Like, if you look up Neb's Fun World on Google, it's a real place, and it's only two hours away from me, guys. I could actually go here. So this all happened after hours, and two of these teenagers broke into this place, and one of them waited outside. The complex had entertaining parts in it, such as a bowling area, arcade area, and a jungle gym. So these two teenagers went inside to to explore and never actually came out. So hours had gone by and the third teenager who was waiting outside was like, okay, where are my friends? This has been way too long. So he decided to go into the building to try and find where his friends were, but he could not find them anywhere. The only thing he found was one of his friend's cell phones on the ground. When he looked at the phone, he was in shock because he found a photo of a monstrous anomaly which manifested itself in the back rooms of the complex. It appeared to be this giant human looking vertical mouth. It had crooked teeth that manifested in an open doorway and written right above this door said, the smile room. So obviously he called the police and showed them this photo, but when they arrived at the scene, this crooked mouth thing was nowhere to be seen. The smile room creature has the ability to infect victims and use them as hosts to further its mysterious goals. The victim turns into a humanoid creature who had the same teeth as the smile room 
and running down its body. So there are pictures of what these human hosts will actually look like, and it's very creepy. Now, apparently this smile room has the ability to manifest itself really anywhere in the world, which explains why when the police arrived at this location, it was nowhere to be seen because it just like jumps from place to place, trying to catch victims. So I thought this was such a creepy urban legend and just had to tell you guys. All right, so let's move on to the country road creature. So it is definitely known for its very odd and disturbing appearance. And as its name implies, the country road creature tends to be spotted in the back country roads. So literally you could be driving along a country road in the dark and see this figure pass by your car. Horrible. The country road creature appears to be a pale, tall, and slim creature with very long claws on its hands. And just like the other stories, there's actually pictures of these sightings that go along with it. The first picture of this creature was near the woods. A person inside of a vehicle took the picture of the creature, which was looking at the person running across the road. After this one photo was released, a ton more started appearing on the internet. The next photo is of the creature climbing on a building going to the other side. And it's just so creepy how like long its arms and legs are. The next photo shows the creature walking past a car window. So you can't even see its face, you just see its long legs and its creepy claw hand. Another photo shows the creature's long clawed hand reaching down into the basement. And then someone even took a picture of the creature standing in front of them, which shows the creature's hands on the ground and the monster looking straight into the person who was taking the photo. It almost looks like it's ready to just like jump on him. The last photo of this creature shows a pale man standing in front of a vehicle with the man's clawed hand appearing to be the same as the creature's hand. So this implies that the creature is actually able to shapeshift and turn into a human. And this could happen so he can lure his victims to eat them. So I really hope I never see this creature while I'm driving along the roads because I live in the country. All right, and the last urban legend we're gonna talk about is called the Giants. These are also known as the Storm Creatures or the Titans. They look like these various giant creatures that come down from the sky whenever there's a storm or really bad weather. The first picture of the giant was released on July 30th, 2018, showing a massive humanoid shrouded in mist bending down. And then if you look underneath him, there's like a crowd of mysterious people just like standing there. On August 6, 2018, another image was released of a giant four-legged entity going through a small village near a mountain. His skin is this dark gray color and he's so tall that he's literally over the clouds you can't even see his whole body. On August 8, 2018, another photo was released during a storm and you can see that two more creatures arrived to the event. One appears to be very thin with multiple long legs and only the foot of the second one is shown. Just two days later on August 10th, 2018, another image of the giant was released. It has a bird-like head and several small spiky protrusions on its body. On September 2nd, 2018, the image this time shows a thin gray giant humanoid in the middle of the road that seems to be composed of a mysterious mist or something similar. So literally all of these storm giants started appearing all over the internet in pictures. And the thing is, storms are already just a scary thing in general. If you ever look outside and see a tornado coming from your house, it's so daunting, it's so scary. And then you add these really huge creatures coming down from the clouds, it would be terrifying to see in real life. On September 17th, 2018, a picture shows what is currently the biggest giant ever captured on photo, with the creature appearing to be the size of a small mountain. On December 21st, 2018, it shows a black thin humanoid towering over a small city with arms as long as its legs. After a year on July 30th, 2019, it shows a giant tall enough for its head to breach the clouds with its head surrounded by many birds. And then October 20th, 2019, there was a photo that only shows two thin bent legs and more tendrils. They have the role of abducting humans, though it's unknown if humans stay alive during the abduction. He also created these similar giant creatures called bridge worms. They are absolutely humongous and disturbing and hang out around bridges, so they are often seen by people driving by. I just 
thought I would include them in this video because they are also very, very giant creatures. So these series of photos of giants coming down from the sky during storms really freaked people out, especially because they were so huge, you can barely see them. They were always covered by mist. And like storms are already very scary as they are, but then like have some creature coming down from the sky, so spooky. And I just think these photos are so cool to look at. And once again, yes, it's only an urban legend. The creator of this is an artist, like I said, but nevertheless, they still creep me out when I look at them. creature we're going to be talking about is called Cartoon Girl. Now, she's also known as Yo-Yo, which is a very interesting name. Yo-Yo looks like a normal human being with a bear mask. She has a height of five feet and has human arms and legs. She wears a long girl's dress, and in many images, her hands are not visible. So obviously, Yo-Yo's face is not a human face. It looks like a drawing of a bear's face with two large cartoon eyes. Now, there's a very tragic legend behind Yo-Yo. They say that she was actually a human before she turned into this monster. As a human, she was avoided many times and other people would think she was boring. So Yo-Yo felt very sad and unincluded in life. And after a while, she stopped playing with people, she stopped seeing friends because no one really seemed to like her. She slowly stopped going outside and her parents were away busy at work, so they never realized that she was having issues. She basically spent all of her time alone in her bedroom, so she started to draw to pass the time. She drew absolutely everything around her and as days passed, Yo-Yo started to lose her mind. She was turning into this giant mess. She had so much anger and sadness. She hated the world around her and day by day she would sit and look out her window and she would see all the kids playing around outside and she could not control her feelings. As she watched them, she wanted to go after them. She wanted to harm them. So right away, she began to draw. She drew the face of a large yellow bear. She cut it out, she put it over her face to use as a face mask. She stormed downstairs, ran outside, and went up to the kids and started to growl at them like a bear. Her initial goal was to scare them away. The thing was, at first glance, they didn't give much attention to what she was doing. In fact, they started to laugh at her because all they saw was this little girl with a bear mask trying to growl at them, which I agree would look very bizarre. So she got angry and ran at the kids and attacked them. And those kids were never found again, so it went from zero to a hundred pretty quickly. Then she went after some more kids. She would follow them home and she, it, it, uh, it wasn't good. The legend goes that after she did this, she was not human anymore. Her bare face became permanent and Yo-Yo was now nicknamed the cartoon girl. So she ran away from her home where no one could find her and she roamed all around the places where kids would linger and she'd watch them play and get angry all over again. And then out of nowhere, those kids would be attacked and never seen again because at the root of all her anger she hated kids and she did not want to see them happy. It's because Yo-Yo felt like her right to be a happy kid was snatched away from her and she now lives in abandoned forests and buildings and she's seen giving poisonous candy and venomous spiders away to kids. If she ever sees any kid alone she'll walk up to them and growl behind this bear mask. She'll even confront lonely travelers and stand in front of them on four legs like a bear. It is also said that when she meet somebody, she'll extend her hand as if offering a handshake. And if the person gets scared and runs away screaming, she'll go after them and attack them. But if the person gives her a handshake without fear, she'll let them go unharmed. It's almost like she's just craving human attention. But yeah, this whole cartoon girl character is absolutely terrifying and I would not want to meet her, but also her backstory is really sad. All right, the next creature is called the Door Monster Finder. Door Monster Finder, at first glance, appears to be a head of a man peeking through a door. But at the same time, the legs of either the victim or the creature seem to be floating. Now, you can't really see too much detail of this creature because of the darkness of the photo, but people assume it's a very tall man standing in a doorway with glowing eyes and a large mouth. Apparently, the creature preys on innocent people in their homes by entering through the front door and moving around the house completely unnoticed. Then, if a victim is downstairs getting a snack, 
snack or watching TV, it will sneak behind them and take them away to a nearby forest to later consume the victim. If the victim is in its bed, it will crawl into the closet and mimic a loved one's voice, thereby confusing the person and thus luring them to their inevitable doom. Many people have apparently tried to kill this creature to get rid of it, but nothing has worked because apparently this creature has incredible fighting skills, it has long claws. But I found one way that you can get this creature to leave your house, it's really bizarre. It says to deter this creature, you have to nail four nails into wood and then chant this six times. We are not who you want, we are not who you want. This will let the creature know that you're not food and then it will leave, which is really strange. <laughs> and lastly we have a creature called a baby in the basement. The creature has a head that resembles a misshapen baby mannequin's head and it's attached to a long fleshy neck that winds down to a thin skeletal body. The creature is on all fours and apparently it's five feet high when it's doing that, but if it actually stands up, apparently it's seven feet tall, which is terrifying. The baby in the basement is an extremely hostile creature chasing and attacking almost anything it sees. Now the reason behind why this creature is what it is is sort of unknown. As its name suggests, the creature manifests only in the basements of homes. No one has ever seen this creature outside of a basement. It says a dwelling's family member should be safe as long as no one ventures into the basement. And it said that if a house doesn't have a basement, you're, you're totally fine, it will never bother you. It only goes into houses with basements. So comment down below if you don't have a basement because then you're safe. So basically if you go into the basement and it hears you, it's gonna run over to you on all fours and eat you. But this creature entirely relies on sound. Apparently it has very bad eyesight, it lives in the dark. So if you're making any noise, that's when it will find you. But if you go down there completely unheard, you should be fine. So yeah, next time I'm in my basement, I'm gonna be terrified. <laughs> He is a seemingly empty blue bug-like mascot costume and his true intentions are unknown, but it's most likely just attacking people for the sake of it. It is said that he is six foot six feet tall and quite possibly has a dead person inside of his mascot suit. The creature has two antennas and long blue hair covering his entire costume body. It also has two or three toes on its feet, but no one really knows how many fingers it has. In one of the pictures, the costume man is holding a victim wearing a white bloody shirt, implying that the costume man did something pretty horrible to him. The costume man might be the ghost of the person who used him, or maybe the costume itself is the monster, although we are uncertain. Now there is a quote from Trevor Henderson when he posted this picture on his Tumblr, and the quote says, they say he died inside the suit, and they didn't find him for days after. The humidity, it made the body, well, it was really difficult performing in an autopsy, let's just just say that. So it seems like someone tragically perished while wearing this mascot costume. Who knows what happened to them? Heart attack, heat stroke, who knows? Something happened while they were wearing the costume. They died. People didn't find him until days and days later. And I guess something happened. They mishmashed together and now it's a monster. Pretty creepy. Unfortunately, there's not much more about this creature. I would love to learn more, but I had to mention him because he is very intriguing. Next, we have what is called Trevor Henry. Anderson's camcorder footage. So creature one is a bird creature. The bird creature is first of the camcorder creatures. It has gray skin, a bird-like hand with claws, and multiple strands of hair. It has two eyes with big pupils and its fingers have varying sizes. It has these sharp teeth and red around its eyes. And nothing can be seen of this creature except for its arms and head. Next we have creature number two who is called the tall wanderer. The tall wanderer is a second camcorder creature. It has greenish skin, a head with no eyes, mouth or ears, and wobbly limbs. Its arms appears to be different sizes and a very long body. It appears to be super wobbly and it has no feet or hands, it just has like nubs. I would not want to be the person capturing these creatures with my camera. And then we have creature number three which is called the couple. The couple is the last of the camcorder creatures. They appear to have pitch black skin and white eyes. One appears to be wearing a dress, they are both holding hands, they look like humans, but they're slightly taller in height and they have like these glowing white eyes. I 
think out of the three camcorder creatures, these ones freak me out the most. Imagine looking out your bedroom window and seeing these people like on the roof across from you. No, thank you. Then we have what is called the Hokkaido hands. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. The Hokkaido hands depicts numerous human-like arms reaching out from behind or beside the trunks of different trees in a forest. Most of the arms are very thin and bony, almost seeming malnourished. They also seem to be smaller than like normal adult hands or arms. So people think they may actually be the arms of children. So this is the description that came with this photo when it first came out. It says, screenshot taken from a tape left in a dirty and broken camcorder found outside a forest in Hokkaido, Japan. It was lodged in the crook of an old tree over 12 feet off the ground. Apparently this tape was taken during the early hours of the morning on June 30th of 1994. That was the year that I was born. One theory states that these hands are a group of eight children that went to a camp very deep in a forest of Japan to a very radioactive area. So over time they morphed into a single being with multiple of the same body parts, after which they needed to hunt humans and other animals in order to survive and possibly evolve. So that's really creepy. I would not want to be like camping in a forest and look out of my little tent door and see these arms like wrapping around trees. No, 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 no. Trevor Henderson also has a very similar creature called the arms in the vent. The arms in the vent are, as the name implies, unusually long human arms and hands that appear to be coming out of a ventilation system, frantically reaching and grabbing. The hands have five bony fingers that appear to lack fingernails. In this image, it looks like there's about seven arms poking out, but there might be more that are not visible yet, like they haven't come out yet. So who knows how many arms this thing really has. A second image of the arms was posted by Trevor a few months after the first image. This image shows five of the arms reaching out of the ceiling of a gazebo. It almost seems like these arms are able to manifest themselves in any sort of crevice, and it doesn't seem like they're actually connected to any body. They're just arms. There's no feasible way a creature could fit itself in the ceiling of the gazebo shown in the second photo, especially in such a way that the arms would dangle down like that. Now, Trevor Henderson has revealed that the arms are hostile because he includes this police report of two young girls that this creature seemingly killed. And it's unknown what the creature actually does to its victims, but it is safe to say that it does devour its victims in some sort of way. People say that these arms will lure people in by pretending to be a human in distress, which would obviously grab the attention of nearby people. And when they run over to try and help, they scoop them up. The hands can't see anything. So they're constantly trying to grab at anything they can take. It would just be so creepy to be walking by like a tunnel and seeing like human arms frantically moving around saying like, help me, help me. And when you go over to help them, it's not what you think it is. Okay, so let's talk about this very creepy creature by Trevor Henderson. His name is Mr. Bag, but he's also known as Mr. Trash Bag. So this is the very first picture that was ever shown of him. It's basically this tall figure standing in a dark building. It has a very pale human-like head with a large nose, squinted eyes. Its face is the only true visible part of its body. And the rest of the creature is completely covered in black. It almost looks like a trash bag or a body bag. Behind the creature, we can clearly see two chalk or crayon drawings, most likely that of a child's. The top drawing shows the full body picture of this creature, and the drawing below that shows the same creature, but in a little bit less detail. It is seen observing a person from a house in the middle of the woods. Then, a little while later, a more detailed drawing came out of Mr. Bag. This is like a full-bodied crayon drawing. Here we can see that the creature's trash bag is taking on the shape of a human-like figure. We can also see that there's actually a body, like a person, wrapped up inside of the garbage bag, almost appearing as if it's like a mummy, which really explains the creature's relaxed face and pale expression, because they're probably not alive anymore. The body itself also barely takes up the space inside the bag. And in this drawing, you can also see the size of the creature compared to a little kid. Apparently, the average 
average height of a five-year-old is about three and a half feet tall. And you can see that this creature is about four times as tall as this little girl, meaning it's about 14 feet tall, which is incredibly tall and incredibly creepy. We may assume that this creature has some sort of connection with children or one child in particular, and it is currently unknown what that connection could be. Then we had another image come out of Mr. Bag on December 13th of 2020. This image depicts Mr. Bag eerily standing in a basement. He looks a little bit taller than before. Now this photo also came with a caption that says, hey dad, it's going okay. Yeah, I can't tell. It'll take a lot longer to clean than I thought. I haven't even touched the basement yet. I thought I heard an animal down there. Yeah, I know you warned me. It's okay. It'll give me a chance to say goodbye. Yeah, love you too. Bye. So people think that this person talking is about to move out of their house and they're mistaking Mr. Bag's noises down there for being some sort of animal. So clearly this person has not encountered Mr. Bag just yet. It is unknown if the person talking is the same girl from the drawings, though it is quite likely that this is the case. Then another image came out of Mr. Bag on January 26th of 2021. This time you see an unobstructed detailed view of the creature in a gas station. And yet again, Mr. Bag has grown even taller. He's about the same height as the street lights behind him. And apparently the average height of a street light is about eight to 50 feet tall. So people are thinking that in this image, he's about 20 feet tall, which is much taller than he was in the other images. In this picture, he's actually about half the height of Siren Head, which is another creature that we all know and are scared of. This image also came with a caption that said, it followed us even when we fled the house. I saw it for the first time while stopping for gas. We're still driving. I'm afraid to stop for more than a night. It's always close. So obviously this person or group of people are being followed by Mr. Bag after they moved out of their house. The person may have likely encountered Mr. Bag in the basement and left the house much quicker than anticipated due to him. So they're currently being followed and stalked by him. And they're really afraid to stop the car even even for gas because obviously they don't want him getting any closer. So now that you've seen all of these really creepy images of him, let's talk a little bit about his origins. Now there are two very popular theories that people have come out with, but none of these have been confirmed, I don't believe. The first theory is the manifestation theory. This theory says that the first victim of Mr. Bag may have had a traumatic experience as a child when they found a trash bag with a dead body inside of it. It. The assumption is that Mr. Bag was actually manifested into existence as an actual living creature by the intense imagination and trauma of his first victim when they were a child. And then second, we have the creature theory. This theory says that Mr. Bag is just another creature in the Trevor Henderson universe that has always existed. It likes to befriend people and acts as a sort of benevolent guardian. And over time, the people grow less and less interested in him, believing him to be just an imaginary friend they had in their childhood childhood and leaving him alone up until they encounter him once again, this time seeking vengeance as he believes they had abandoned him and betrayed him. So it's like he befriends these kids and they think that he's just an imaginary being. So when they get older and get bored of him, that's when he becomes angry and starts to stalk them and go after them. And lastly, let's talk about his abilities. Mr. Bag is currently a malevolent creature that wraps itself around people, suffocating them and making them a part of him which could be the reason why he keeps getting taller in every image that we see him, because he's constantly pulling people into his trash bag and growing and growing. He's apparently not aggressive to people who are friendly to him, because as you can see in that other picture, he's just standing beside that little girl not doing anything. So at that point, they were probably friends. A Polaroid image of Mr. Bag also shows us that he has been around since at least 1993. So it is possible that he has been in continuous cycle of friendship and anger with multiple people beforehand. He apparently also moves around by gliding on the floor, constantly ducking and twisting his bag. It almost reminds me of like a snake or something. And people know he's coming because you can actually hear the crinkling of the garbage bag. Mr. Bag likes to wander around basements, attics, and kitchens very late at night. This gives us the impression that Mr. Bag is a very mobile and stealthy creature, able to go between people's houses unnoticed. So the theory is that he could be in your house right now. So watch out.